how do I mute? You don't. There is no mute. There is only speaking forever. Right. Settings. You've been welcome into the respawn zone. He controls the volume. He controls the treble. He controls the bass. He controls the moods. No, no, I've got computers. an infinite loop now. Please stop. <laughs> welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter, a Destiny 2 podcast. A show where we discuss tips, tricks, and some tools to help all Guardians succeed and enjoy playing more. What makes Hunters different? Well, Hunters are not streamers or YouTubers, except when they are. We have a passion for Destiny and are dedicated to keeping all Hunters informed and up to date with all the latest Hunter Destiny 2 information, Hunter news, Hunter opinions, and more. We encourage your questions and Hunter feedback. You can contact all the Hunters at Two Titans and a Hunter at Hotmail.com or on Twitter at Two Titans underscore Hunter. And now, on with the show. And I am surrounded this week by filthy hunters. And not filthy because you're a bad people, filthy because you've been working really, really hard raising those banners, proving yourselves in the Guardian games. And we are proving ourselves, even, even though it has been proven, Titans are cheating. We are cheating, are they? but we're not very good at it. <laughs> They're recruiting anyone to help them. Somebody, anybody tell them okay, how. Okay, so I was going to cover the dark future today, or the first part of it. Now, I thought with the Guardian Games being in, and a little snippet of information I found out, I'd go looking. So on my travels, I found this, the Underdog. It's the ship from the Guardian Games. And this is its lore entry. Kick, starved, or scorned. I always get up. I always go on. Hawthorne walked through the courtyard, her eyes trained on Zavala. He stood looking out over the city. He turned as she approached. Sarai, he said, inclining his head. I want to compete in the Guardian game, she said. Zavala paused. Ah, he begun. Well, I'd imagined them as being... He studied the unchanging expression on her face. Expectant, determined, prepared for an argument, for guardians. I've seen the event, she said. I can't do them all, but some don't seem guardian exclusive. I can collect resources, I can clear out lost sectors. Don't need to be a guardian for that. True, Zavala said, but... Hawthorne leaned close to him and dropped her voice. When we were taking the city back, you said, I remember what I said, Zavala murmured. You called me Guardian. So? Zavala folded his arms behind his back, shifted his weight. Which team would you fight for? None of them, she said. They're paused. All of them. You have to choose. Hawthorne crossed her arms. She studied Zavala. Titans. Zavala opened his mouth, then closed it again. I'm not going to forbid it, but... Great, Hawthorne said, turning to go. See you at the award ceremony. Now, this isn't the actually only one. This goes on into the Sparrow. The Sparrow is called Team Spirit. No Guardian works alone, Commander Zavala. I thought you were against me competing in the games, Hawthorne said, leaning against one of the wooden supports in the barn. They'd just come back from the weep, and her exhaustion was catching up with her. The light was starting to fade too. Thought it was only for guardians. Semantics, Xavala said. He stood over a map laid out on a wooden table. That was before you pushed us into the lead for the lost sector clearance. He pointed at a place on the map. What do you think? Our next point of attack? Hawthorne sighed. Maybe tomorrow. Titans never rest, Zavala said gravely. Hawthorne eyed him, then leaned forward, peered at the map. Yeah, she murmured. Yeah, could get in there, especially with that dark to cover me. There's a good couple of sniping perches in that cave if you go in as the heavy. You can cover me. Right, Hawthorne grinned. You know, maybe we Titans have got this thing in the bag. Oh, we do, Zavala said, studying the map. We most certainly do. That had to have been from last year, because this year it doesn't seem to These here. two entries are from last year. Okay, but so. this proved that last year's results null and void because it wasn't just Guardians working for the Titans. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're totally cheaters, yeah. 
So right. did, Bun did Bungie rig the game from the get go so the lore oh, would come true? Yeah. Of course. See y'all, y'all yell at me like I'm a stupid freaking paranoid hunter or whatever. But y'all don't understand. I know things. I know things that you don't know that I know. I know things that Bungie doesn't know that I know that you know that I think that I. I mean, he got lost that. I mean, you are paranoid. Yeah, he he was halfway through his transmog and just got confused with too many currencies. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it's not paranoia if they really are out to get you. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At that point in right. time, it's a conspiracy. Next entry. Pick one. Titans, Hunters, or Warlocks? Well, I think we have to end with the Titans, because that's just the most hilarious one. Let's do the Hunters. The Hunters. You'll like Tell us about that, that beautiful cape. This is the Cobra's Hood lore tab. I never did find that horn. Lord Shax. Prakesh sat on his grey hornet, parked in his usual spot at the base of the tower. Former Guardian was watching bootleg transmissions of the latest Cabal death matches when one of his runners tugged on his sleeve. Prakesh jumped in surprise. Son of a drag, don't sneak up like that. He smoothed his fur vest in self-placation. Sorry, sir. The kid scuffed his feet sheepishly. Just that some guys want to make a bet. Prakesh sucked his teeth in annoyance. So take the bet. What the hell are you hassling me for? The kid ran his grubby finger along the sharp black lines of the bookies' ride. They won't give me the chip. They say they've got to talk to you direct. Prakesh swatted the runner's hand away. I just had that detail. He sighed in exasperation. Fine. Send him over. But if they end up making some lame prop on the new Hunter Vanguard or something, I'm going to run you over with this thing. The kid nodded and scampered off. A few minutes later, a fire team of three hunters sauntered over. Prakesh slouched further into his sparrow in a dramatic display of nonchalance. His ex-Corsair enforcer, Tulnik, cracked his knuckles. The hunters posed coolly in front of the bookie. The team leader, a gunslinger, casually flicked a knife between his fingers. I guess you've probably heard of us. Prakesh glanced at Tulnik, who shook his head. Nah, not really. The bookie said, now what's this about? Dark Strider stepped forward menacingly. Show respect, you're talking to the Death Dealers. Prakesh raised an eyebrow. Cool name. I once had a cat called Death Dealer. Behind him he heard Tulnik guffaw. The Arc Strider snarled and sent a crackle of arc energy rippling through his arm. But before he could strike, the Night Stalker blinked in front of him and put his hand on his chest. Whoa, whoa, cool it, Gene. He's not worth it. Remember your breathing exercises. The Arc Strider nodded. You're right, you're right, he's not worth it. He retreated, put his hands on his head and walked in circles around the plaza, exhaling loudly. Prakesh cleared his throat cautiously. So, you want to make a bet? Or... You're damn right we do, the gunslinger replied. We're betting on the Hunters to win the Guardian games. Hunters rule! shouted Jean from across the plaza. Is that all? Prakesh asked with confusion. That's stock standard. Why didn't you just put in a chip like everyone else? The Night Stalker leaned in conspiratorially. Because of what we're wagering, she said, and opened her pack to reveal a single curling horn. Prakesh's eyes went wide. Is that whose I think it is? The gunslinger crossed his arms smugly. You tell us. How did you even get this? Never question the Death Dealers. Now, what's it worth to you? The gunslinger said. Prakesh shrugged. Hunters win gold. You get one legendary hand cannon each. If not, I get... Dropped his voice to a whisper. The horn. Throw in a couple of humble amgrams, the Anarch Stall accounted, and you've got a deal. Prakesh pretended to consider. It's a deal, he finally said, and recorded the transaction in his data pad. Good luck in the Guardian game, Hunters. Hunters rule! shouted Gene to nobody in particular. Gene's a great guy. I like Gene. Gene the Hunter. Yeah, but do you, do you actually realize what they're actually gambling with there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, as a hunter, I normally don't give up Titans a whole lot of respect. There's two exceptions. Saint-14, that guy gets a lot of respect, and then Shaxx, right? <laughs> These guys.
I don't know if they're incredibly brave or ridiculously stupid, but I'm going to go with ridiculously stupid <laughs> from his corpse. All right. Or from his body, which then became a corpse. Okay. So I'm thinking this probably isn't someone's going to lose a head to a backhand. I feel it, I feel it coming. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a little more entry somewhere but, where, where Gene's going to walk around headless. But at the same time, it is absolutely Still shouts in thing to do, You know? It's just like... <laughs> you can just say it. Hunter's rule. And his head's gone. Right? That's our artifact oh, for goodness. next season. The headless... The headless... Uh, the, the headless Gene. Oh, the headless hunter. Shouts, <laughs> the shouts hunter's rule. It's it's not head hunter. It's the headless. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> right now, that leaves us with the warlocks or the titans. Jesus, I can't believe that's the thing that they're doing. <laughs> ah, why? Let's do the I mean, warlocks. I know why. We're hunters and we're dumbasses for the most part, but why? <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue. Uh, I will in a second. The uh, the link for the warlocks appears to have disappeared. Wow. Or, or never made it in here. I was just looking Somebody forward to it. Um, isn't that you for 100 and <laughs> something episodes now? <laughs> I don't need to be prepared. I just come here because I'm beautiful. Respawn, keeping his streak of 118 unprepared episodes unbroken. <laughs> what? What? How? The information about possibly Titans cheating, but somebody did put it out on Twitter. So shout out to AZ mm -hmm. Plays on that one. This is the Phoenix Fire, the Warlock Bond. Challenge every aspect of your opponent. Sometimes a strong body hides a fragile psyche. I call a ray. Prakash sat on his grey hornet, parked in his usual spot at the base of the tower. The former Guardian read dispatches from Spider's associates with one eye and watched his runners scurry about with the other. The younger kids took bets from all over the city and delivered them to Prakash at appointed intervals. Once the action paid off, the bookie would send the older kids to settle up. Any incalcitrant debtors were dealt with by Tulnik, his enormous ex-Corsair bodyguard, who was currently leaning against the tower scratching himself. Prakesh called to Tulnik, who snapped to attention. A fire team was gliding towards them from across the courtyard. The Guardian's cloaks billowed in a non-existent wind, and their feet barely touched the paving stones. Prakesh rolled his eyes. Warlocks. Prakesh called out, Looking sharp, I love the bird hat. This is Felwinter's helm, jackass, the Void Walker fired back. Probably cost me more than your sparrow. Good, Prakesh retorted. Then you've got the cash to pay your debts. Val Gushu wasn't quite the mad dog you thought she was. The warlocks glanced at each other surreptitiously. About that, said the Sun Singer. We don't have the moats yet. Tulnik, sensing his moment, stepped forward with a menacing flex. Prakash stayed his enforcer with a manicured hand. Daddy Tully, these are learned scholars, and I'm sure they have a needlessly complex plan to make things right. We do, said the Stormcaller through gritted teeth. Double or nothing on the Guardian Games. Crucible this week. Prakresh gave a low whistle. That's some heavy action. Who are you backing? Us, the Sunsinger responded. Against Meloria's Titans. Prakesh, eyebrows shot up. Meloria's at the top of the leaderboard. She's dangerous, and you guys are stylish. It's a bad bet. Unless, the bookie tapped the side of his nose, you know something I don't. The Void Walker tossed her head and flicked her hair, then realized she was still wearing her helmet. Awkwardly, she put her hands on her hips. Let's just say she's about to have a bad case of existential dread the night before the match. The Warlock snickered. Little trick I picked up from the Scions. The Void Walker finished. Titans put all the armor on their chests. The Sun Singer pined and none between their ears, like a castle with no roof. The Void Walker guffawed. That's why we always look like they're getting rained on. The Stormcaller dropped his voice an octave, puffed out his chest, and lumbered around on bowed legs. When the only tool you have is a titan, every hammer is a nail. Indeed, the Warlocks chortled and high-fived. It settled then. Prakesh pulled out his datapad. 
you guys beat Meloria this week and the slate's clean. Otherwise, I get the moats. Prakesh winked at the Void Walker and that fancy hat. The Void Ooh, Walker man. was suddenly serious. Guys, no. Come on. <laughs> she implored her teammate. You know how many engrams I had to deal. The Sunsinger interrupted. <laughs> he removed his gauntlet and pressed his fingers to the data pad. Deal, Prakesh smiled broadly. Good luck in the Guardian games. Not that you'll need it. Not the bird hat. These are uh, so well written. <laughs> and the hat. Whoa, 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, let's let's think about this for a second. Deal. What did you see with your mama? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the whole line about the Titans putting the armor on their chest and not between their ears makes me think of every absurd like set of gauntlets and chest piece we have and stupid helmet it's like yeah our, our shoulders <laughs> are as big as a castle and then there's no roof it's 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 perfect yeah but it actually proves the warlocks <laughs> thought, thought about this because you've got the uh, crown of tempest it's got all those spikes in it so if they try getting headbutted by a titan they just impale themselves mm-hmm. uh, i don't think they would care if we're being honest with each other Illusion, I think, <laughs> intellect yeah. is not that we care about Oh, oh! Uh, I don't even think they would stop to think about whether or not that they would be impaled. You know, are Titans smart enough to know that sharp things stabby things? Right? Probably not. I mean, look at our look at our Prefectus armor from the season. That's why we have the big poof on the top. Is it keeps the it keeps the brain meat away from the spiky armors? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, turn, I, it, I, I turn, it, so... turn that helmet yeah. upside down, and that <laughs> is the cone to go with the traveler on top, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking like um, you know, like, have the mohawk and keep the keep the space between, like like they head but the uh, right, but they don't realize that it's supposed to be sharp and impale them, so they're just not smart enough to get stabbed. Yeah, but then they just get electrocuted. Uh... Sounds like a Tuesday. I mean, it sounds like a fit of <laughs> panic. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. All right, this is the Titan Mark Lion's Pride. With fists like those, who needs guns? Everyone else, that too. Lord Shax. Prakesh sat on his grey hornet, parked in his usual spot at the base of the tower. The former guardian was holding a kimchi burrito purchased from a local food cart with one hand while scrolling through the crucible results with the other. Guardian Games always brought an influx of betters, and he needed to know which fire teams had the hot hands. It was shaping up as a banner year for gambling. The bookie's hulking bodyguard, Tulnik, was leaning against the tower, looking at cabal pinups. The ex-corsair clicked his tongue in warning. Prakesh's attention had shifted from the burrito to a trio of enormous titans lumbering towards them. A glob of kimchi plopped onto his fur vest. The fire team leader, a sunbreaker, loomed over the bookie. You, uh, you got something on your hair shirt. Prakesh tossed the remainder of the burrito over his shoulder, splattering in the side of the tower. Yep, that's alpaca. He crossed his arms over the stain. What can I do for you? The sentinel stepped forward. We want to bet on the Hunters to win the Guardian games. Prakesh eyebrows shot up. Really? Do I smell a fix coming in? This is huge. He leaned forward, conspiratorially. Zavala's not in on it, is he? The Titans glanced at each other in confusion. The striker spoke up. No, we want to bet on the Hunters. The bookie frowned. Yeah, you're betting on the Hunters because you're going to throw those matches. Their blank helmeted stares prompted him to clarify. I mean, your plan is to lose on purpose, right? The Sunbreaker looked taken aback. Titans never lose to Hunters. Yeah, we're much better at fighting, the Sentinel affirmed. Hunters are always jumping around with their little knives or hiding in smoke. He waved his arms around frantically. But I just put up my wall and then Tanshi punches them, like, really hard. Down. It's true, the striker proclaimed earnestly. I can punch super hard. So your plan is to win, Prokash clarified. The trio nodded emphatically. Then why? The bookie asked slowly. Then why are you betting on the hunters? The sentinel scoffed. Element of surprise, my man. They'll never see it coming. 
He and the Sunbreaker fist bumped. But all bets are confidential, Progress explained. We wouldn't be here if we weren't confident, the Sunbreaker bragged. Progress pinched the bridge of his nose. He was developing a headache. I mean, all bets are secret. Nobody will know what you've wagered. Obviously, the Sunbreaker condescended. It wouldn't be surprised if everybody knew. The Sentinel tapped his massive finger to his temple. See? Warlocks aren't the only ones who come up with clever centrifuges. Prakresh threw up his hands in capulation. Fine, I'll take your bet. He pulled out his data pad, but I want to be really clear. If the Titans win the Guardian Games, you're never going to see this glimmer again. There's more to life than glimmer, said the Sunbreaker. I can't wait to see the look on their stupid faces when they find out. The bookie shrugged. Then it's a good deal. Good luck in the games, I think. <laughs> this is this is what you're up against. If you if you can't beat us, then I have nothing left for you. <laughs> <laughs> you and all your clever clever centrifuges. No, 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 no. It, it makes more dangerous. You're not smart enough to realize the danger that you're in, and you just pound through a brick wall. And the problem is, is that you win. Against the brick wall, <laughs> you know. Um, we have the but, element of surprise. That brick Warlock, never saw Warlocks blink past the brick wall. Hunters know to avoid the brick wall, but Titans no, are like, let's go it. through the brick wall. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's no more brick wall. Uh, but but I think more importantly, we we skipped right by an important part of this cabal uh... pinups. I did not even hear that. Was that when the baby came in? Uh, the bookie's hulking bodyguard, Tulnik, was leaning against the tower looking at Cabal pinups. <laughs> That's <wild. laughs> uh, With the horns! With the penis with the horns in it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That is... That's not a pleasant image. Could you imagine? Uh, what's her face? Just like... In a two-piece bikini on a beach, sipping a macchiato. What the uh, I've never seen before. Um, uh, it looks like to old Tulnik's got a thing for cabal. It does, and I'm his not thick, sure. Thick it, what is his bodyguard a cabal? Because that would explain no, it. No, he's a, he's a corsair. He'll be a, he'll be a um, taken, not taken. Why am I saying taken? Awoken. Ah, I see. So who, so who is Prakesh? I mean, you know, we've we've been introduced to Prakesh now. You know, the bookie. Like, who it, is was? Is he it, just like a bookie? He's, in the he's tower? a former. It it said on that he's a former guardian. Um, okay. And uh, let me just chuck his name into uh, into his it all up to, uh, Yeah, I was just wondering. Yes, you know, again trying to figure out just yeah who all these people are and you know gene i know gene's the hunter that's easy enough to remember but he, he has a name i can remember for more than two seconds per cash it's like okay you're a bookie in the tower but is that is that who you are or is there like more to Prakash? you know not a name i'd heard before but i know if it was a name i should have known because i should have been paying attention somewhere i don't think so now if he's saying it's a former guardian then he's either retired or he's lost his ghost or both. Yes. Seems like one would lead directly to the other, unless you're Osiris. Mm. Yeah. He's only mentioned in those three law tabs for the the mark, the um, the bond, and the cloak. Okay, uh, there's so one he's... other entry where it's commanders um, from commanders of Zavala. It's all fun and games until somebody loses a bet. Prakash. Mm. Okay, so they've introduced him sort of for this Guardian Games lore. Yes, that's what it looks like. Cool. Yeah, I, I, every week I struggle with these names and I go, okay, who is this person? What's the context here? So I figured I'd ask and now I know. <clears throat> Your question has been answered. These, the, these three lore pieces were just, just phenomenal. Like the, <laughs> the writing on these were so good. It was. It was really, really good. Right? And it's even even Bungie has actually poked, literally poked fun at everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not just Titans, the Lumbering Brutes, or Floofy Warlocks. 
that don't really know what they're actually doing. <laughs> they're floofing, losing bird hats and bets or something. <laughs> right. And now that all these bets have been made, we're never going to know who, who wins. Well, I guess the Guardian game bets, but the Warlocks bet on themselves in the Crucible. So, I mean, I don't know if they've That's been in the Crucible one lately. Yeah, I don't know if they've been in Crucible lately. I haven't seen many Warlocks in Crucible, so I'm not sure they're going to win that bet either. <laughs> <laughs> Of hunters live. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of frozen tornadoes, aren't there? There sure are. Nothing I don't know. I don't. I don't really go into crucible. Gambit's more my bag. <laughs> You're not losing much, dude. It's it's largely for the best. If mm -hmm. I if if only Guardian kills, I go into Gambit with truth. <laughs> 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 I would use eyes, but I still haven't got it. <laughs> Everybody else's. Don't worry. Seven, seven runs in, still no eyes. Yeah, you're only seven runs in. It took me 30-something, 30 <laughs> 39, I think. Get out of here. In the words of Night Demon, I love our little chats. Right? <laughs> so, uh, do you want to move into the TWAB? Uh, well, well, I yeah. figure, you know, before we get to the TWAB next week in Destiny, I don't know if you guys are ready, but the Clash returns to the Crucible, you know, where we just shoot the men's and then run around and shoot the men's again. Uh, we're going to foil the Fallen's plan to the Devil's Lair Nightfall, the Ordeal. And you can enjoy double Nightfall, the Ordeal rewards all week long. So if you've been sitting around waiting to run Nightfalls or want to get that sweet all-star um, glow on your head, sort of like the blue glow from the old Nightfalls, except it's just kind of white now, like you're an aged guardian, a very learned warlock, you can go do that for the Guardian games. And uh, yeah, so this week's ceremony, after week one, you know, there's the, the ceremony this weekend for the first week, which basically means go to the tower, stand on the circle in front of the podium, hit the button, and you'll get a higher power drop. And then the if you ran any sort of platinum metal this week and turned it in, you'll get the all-star glow, a.k.a. it just kind of looks white. Otherwise, you'll get the first, second, or third place gold, silver, bronze glow above your head. I assume for the full week until the next reset. So, show me what. Get me all the hunters are gold. Freaking Titan Games gonna be ours now. Unless they ran a you know a trials or night. Just remember game. once those once those Final buffs message. start kicking in on the Guardian games, it could be a very <laughs> yeah, different matter. Right? Right? I was thinking about the buffs, right? So the buffs centric right? I still don't entirely think that that's gonna be a game breaker, right? Because the buff increases what you turn in by a percentage only up to a hundred percent right no so, it's not even that it's ten percent yeah. on ten percent on ten percent on ten percent so it drops okay, down a little bit each that, time right so best but case scenario buff, that buff, you can, that, no that one that book is permanent right but what i'm saying though is if let's say there's three times as many hunters as titan right and Titans, best case scenario, you can get 100%, right? Like I said, best case scenario, I don't know what it is. But best case scenario, you get 100%. That means your tokens will only ever be worth double. Double is still not triple. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So unless it's going to go higher than 100% or some derivative, derivative thereof or the hunters just stop playing or whatever, man, barring... Barring hunters doing something incredibly stupid, which isn't unheard of, I don't think that even those really matter much. That's just going to determine who comes in second, I believe. I, I feel hope. like we need, we need the perspective of someone who's actually played the Guardian game, though, and actually helped the hunter cause this week. You mean like I'm doing right now? Smartass? Uh, the, the first week yeah. is basically over. Sorry. You, 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 can take no credit, you can take no credit for the first week of your people. Sorry. I only was able to play Destiny for the last day and a half because my laptop, while I was in a different place that I shall not mention, was not keen to playing Destiny. Steam was just like, oh, we're updating 83 megs for four days. My other game's updated. Destiny didn't. Destiny doesn't love you or want you to be happy. Right? But besides, but don't you want besides, to be happy? I know my hunters are. Are, are the way that they are, and I had complete and utter faith. And what I could not, um, what I could not do with participation, I made up for in uh, motivation. 
I was there in the chat every day, urging them on, encouraging them, giving them the strength that they need, mentally speaking, of course, and the fortitude of a hunter to just be the best. And you know what? I think I think it's been working. Yeah. Yeah. Did you put together a training montage? Because I feel like that's that's what the where we need is some nice training montage to inspire you. Copyright infringement. The song probably still copyright infringement. It's fair use, you're fine. Is it fair use now? Okay. That's well, good. Well, well, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's limits around fair use, but yeah. Uh, humming, humming a couple bars of it is fair use. You're good. <laughs> Changing the words entirely. That's good, right? <laughs> Your creative interpretation of the music. Like, this is our creative interpretation of This Week at Bungie for the 26th Woo! of April in 2021. Woo! From our buddy DMG. And uh, this week of Bungie, Ada One is coming back, prepping for armor synthesis. All, all the armor synthesis. Well, Ada's not coming back. She's prepping, but she's not doing anything helpful for us this I week. She was in the tower. Uh, Astro Cross was talking about how she's already in the tower. Oh, maybe she's in the tower. But I haven't looked. No, so no. there's quite a bit going on this week. The Guardian games have begun. Hunter Titans and Warlocks throughout the system, except for Respawn, have been completing for gold placement each day at the Guardian games. A few of us here in the studio have pledged to help Warlocks as they attempt to prevent a, sweep, prevent a sweeping win by Titans for the second year in a row. Hunters are already showing promise with some early wins. Maybe they Sorry, learned from promise? last year. Sorry, need promise? For more than a single day to win the trophy. Who will take the win? Only time will tell. Editor's note, Hunters will prevail! Editor's editor's note, you misspelled Titans. DMG's note, Warlocks may actually have a chance this year. Calm down, everyone. Let's get back to the 12. <laughs> Yeah, hunters will definitely prevail. I believe in you guys. I believe in us. That's the thing. Kate is watching. There's a, there's a very, very you know, inspirational Guardian Games trailer where we mm -hmm. all look like we're in our SRL tracksuits because they just want to keep teasing us with SRL, and it's it's never going to be a thing. Stop asking. Again, for the new players, SRL is Sparrow Racing League. We used to have uh, this event where you would physically race each other on your sparrows. Including killing each other, including ads on the track, including all kinds of things. And it was kind of amazing. And some people just don't know how to let it go. Did we have it once or was it twice? I I think it was more than twice, wasn't it? Like a few times during that season? The, oh, wow. That's not a thing. There is an underground Sparrow Racing League, mm -hmm. if you know where to find it. Ooh. The Fast Ooh. and the Fallen. <laughs> oh, that's so well done! I can't even fault you for it. <laughs> it's either that or fallen, fallen in the furious. I couldn't decide which to go with at the moment. The fast and the fallen. That's that's definitely way better. Good on you, sir. Good freaking on you. You know, when you say things like that, it makes me think you guys got here ahead of me and and and, and practiced lines. You know, because I'm like, is he really that clever? I don't know. Seems like it. Every now and again, see, see, all my ability that, that doesn't go into reading comprehension goes into cleverness. Ah, I mean, so I'm in max, but not in, in the most useful way. That's the compensation. Gotcha. So, who's excited to go get their uh, their Gilded Conqueror title that's now available? Or who's even a high enough light level to even try a Grandmaster Nightfall? <laughs> one of my club <laughs> members. Well, I say one of my is the leader of the PC side. He actually got that Friday, Gilded Conqueror. How many ways can you spell overachiever? To be fair, he is actually a Twitch affiliate. So, uh... hey, I'm an affiliate now. Did you hear? No. Yeah. Congratulations, Respawn. I got enough people. Not that it matters, but <laughs> the number is there. So, so like, <laughs> go go follow Respawn Twitch.tv slash No One Response in Real Life. And uh, then he can, you know, carry him to victory. Yeah, right. Something. He streams uh, um, more at have, some point more Saturday success. mornings periodically. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other time than that. Uh, during my weeks at home, I'm on. Anyway, doesn't matter. I gotta say, so, it's um, not my weekend. I see it coming up all over the um, the Guardian yeah. Downcast. He's uh, he's always popping up on there, saying he's streaming. Uh, very Does good. it? Oh, yeah. 
I I did not set that up. I don't know how that's a thing. No, Gator set that up. Oh, well, I uh, presume it was Gator that set that up. Fair enough. So there's a quick public service announcement about the future of Nightfall weapons. Next season, we're going to get three new ones. Yep. They're going to be um, redacted, redacted bigger, and redacted about the same size, but shoots differently. <laughs> Which is to say, they don't say. They just say, we're getting three new ones. And the Palindrome, Shadow Price, and Swarm will be taking a brief hiatus for the first half of the season. But when they return, then you'll have a pool of six Nightfall weapons to get. So if you're looking for your Palindrome, Shadow Price, and Swarm, grab it this season. We're going to have three new ones at the beginning of next season, starting May 11th. And then sometime midway through that season, you will then have six choices, which I don't know if it'll just cycle through where there'll be one available each week or two available each week, or if they just say, um, they're all in the pool, hope for the best, because that seems like a very bungee thing to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they say in future twelves they'll actually tell us, you know, what they are, why you should care, all that good stuff. And then uh, armor synthesis and guardian appearance, because that's a thing that's happening that no one has any opinions on. Everyone's just pretty happy with. There's no no conversation at all. So before before we get into the conversation, because I'm sure my, my hunter brethren here have some thoughts and opinions, this is the part that lost me. So before we get too deep, here's a quick list the Sims players will have to take to convert their armor appearance into a universal ornament. One, defeat enemies to earn the synth strand. Two. Spend Synth Strand on bounties to earn Synth Cord. Three, convert Synth Cord at the loom in the tower into Synth Weave. Four, use Synth Weave to convert an unlocked armor appearance, legendary quality or lower, from collections into a universal ornament, armor ornament. Step five, take that ornament, convert it into a Shroot Buck, bring it to Eva Levante. Step six, Eva Levante will give you the true universal armor, armor ornament. That's too many steps and too many currencies. But Bungie that, loves their currencies. So, um, <clears throat> going on to that, right? Uh, in 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 a really convoluted, step intensive kind of way, I get why Bungie chose to have those three things because, uh, you know, when you're making real clothing, you need to get the thread, then spin the thread into a weave or into something thicker than thread and then put that into a weave and then you make garments or whatever right okay yeah. logically and the cord to the weave yeah so um that's all good and dandy and everything like that right but the thing is it is a lot of steps right it it, it very much is a lot of steps and uh it, it's supposed to take a whole season i guess that's why they only give us 10 but that's another topic we'll get into shortly um it's supposed to take a whole season to get these, which I don't like that, right? Because I want to be able to make my armor set relatively quickly, not one piece a week or however long it takes to grind these out, right? I want to I want to look good almost instantaneous, right? Now, in traditional catalog systems, what happens is you take a piece of armor that you want the image of and you lose that piece of armor and now the image of that armor is transposed onto the armor that you want it to look like, right? So it's a one-for-one -one swap. Uh, that's what we're used to. And then, like I said, you lose one piece of armor, and then your transmog is only on the piece of armor that you put it on. It's not a universal ornament type of thing, right? So in that aspect, Bungie's actually made it better than traditional transmog, right? But at the same time, they've also made it significantly more complicated to complete said transmog interaction right so i don't like that honestly um they they need to make it simpler right or 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 something like that the way that they have it now is is going to be it's going to take too long to put an armor set together and i don't think that that's how bungie should be doing it right uh and then it comes to the whole limitation you can only have 20 pieces of transmog the first season and then after that season you can only have 10 pieces of transmog following unless you buy the components for, for silver from the bungee store right okay so here's the thing i've heard a lot of people talk about this in a lot of different ways and they have a lot of different opinions uh but the consensus is a lot of people don't like the fact that bungee's doing this right they're like well why why is it why, why did we only get a limited number uh answer to that is money Okay, so 
as somebody like me that contributes to to, to the bungee store, I, I buy silver to contribute to the game. I play the game. I like the game, and that's how the devs get their a majority of their money is through this store. Okay, well, uh, they limit you on the transmog, so that you have to go into the store and buy more, which I'm okay with, right? And the only reason I'm okay with it is because, hear me out, is because when I was looking through my armor, and then Cool Guy was looking through his armor, and then a few other people that I watched their videos were looking through their armors, they're like, well, there's not a ton of sets that I really want transmog at the moment, right? So if the first season they give us the ability to transmog 20 pieces of gear, that's that's like four full armor sets. And most of us, and I'm, and this is fairly anecdotal, okay? I've only got like the one set that you see me wear here. If I transmog, I'll probably go back to the whole Rasputin armor, right? And that'll be my primary armor because they're telling me that my year one uh, trials armor can't be transmog yet. And that was going to be my second option, right? So that being the case, I've only got two or three sets that I can, that I even want to put together on a permanent basis out of all the stuff I've got unlocked. Now in the future, if they give us new armors that you want to transmog, great, but that'll be a whole nother season, and then you get a whole nother 10 pieces to be able to transmog in that season. But anecdotally speaking, myself, I don't even have four sets that I wanna that I want to put together. So for me personally, this is okay. Other people out there might have way more things they want to do, and I understand why you would be angry at this, but at the same time, you can buy it for silver. From the bungee store. I think the price is a little high at the moment. I hope they bring it down at least a little bit. But you can transmog more if you need to. But keep in mind, the first season that it comes out, you get 40. Sorry, not you get you, you get 20 transmog pieces. Right? That is that's kind of a lot for the first season, right? So I think everybody will be happy with that first season, and then the following seasons you get 10. Um I, I think it's plenty, right? And at the same time, if you want more, uh, you can contribute to Bungie as a company by buying some from the silver store. So playing devil's advocate, I understand why they did it, right? Um, at first, I was really, really angry when somebody told me that they're limiting us without telling me the whole story. And I had this rant prepared. I was typing it out, and I was all upset and angry and all this other stuff, right? But then uh, Demon sent me three videos to watch, and after watching these videos, and they break it down, you know, to how it's being done, I was like, oh, well, it's not really a reason to be angry, because, okay, yeah, I this makes sense why they did it like that. But what doesn't make sense, going back, is the process to make it happen. That's complicated, it's convoluted, it's too many steps. It just, just make my armor into an ornament. Right, just hey, you know, break it apart, write on it like, 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 oh, like the dinosaur armor, for example, for the hunters. That all these hunters are all like, oh my god, it's dinosaur armor. To me, that looks like something you buy from Spirit Halloween, right? It's very cheaply made, and you know what? You can do the same thing uh, to the regular transmog armor. Just, just paint on the armor on a piece of cloth, and you can transmog that, like you did with the hunter dino armor. That was a bad segue, but I was angry about the dino armor. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's important to touch on all the things to make you angry at once. <laughs> Point is, I understand why they did it. They do need to lower the price in the silver store, and they need to make the steps less complicated. That's really all I have to say on the matter, right? So no, no rage-induced <laughs> fury this week about this anyway, because it does make sense the way that they did it. So... Just initially. You know, yeah, these are demons' words coming out of my mouth at this point, and parody's <laughs> words. But wait till it comes out, see how it works out, because I feel as though the number of pieces that they give us is going to be sufficient. Yeah, and then we'll link. Yeah, so so I know Demon sent you. I think yeah, cool guys video. Let's go back down. Yeah. Look at Transmog where he yeah goes through his armor sets because many of them are garbage and nobody wants to transmog them. Yep. And then, you know, Dado did one, you know, how armor synth synthesis transmog will work in Dado's thoughts. And then, this is a terrible idea. This twa was ruined transmog. What were you thinking, Bungie, by Boneless Revenge? I Where didn't get that one. What? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, these are the, you know, he, he, I put a message, I don't even remember, somewhere now saying these are the three he sent you. Because I, I watched the Dado and the Cool Guy one. I didn't see the Boneless Revenge one because 
I, I mean, just like a respawn rant, I try to stay away from the ones that just seem like they're going to be nothing but screaming for 10 minutes. Because one, that's what I come here for. And two, yeah. if you're just going to scream for 10 minutes, then you're just going to scream to be angry for the clicks and not actually look at things and be like, yes, I'm angry, but... And maybe it's not that, but eh, you know, we'll, we'll put the links in the show notes. Uh, we report, you decide. We'll leave it up to you all to decide if it's, you know, where you stand on this. Because yeah, I, I'm sort of with you. It's like uh, the the quantity overall of what I can transmog. Because again, I mean, I, I've worn the same piece of armor, you know, looking the same with the same ornament for the last like seven or eight seasons. So you can tell right. I don't have a diverse wardrobe. So yeah, only having a, a set or two of things I can transmog is actually not a big deal to me. Just the number of steps and the number of very closely named new pieces of currency I have to keep track of, my strand cord and my weave. I, I'm gonna rem, I'm gonna forget three quarters of the time how what I need to do with what or how it's what, and I think okay I can go do this now. Oh wait, no I, I have the wrong synth thing that I now have to remember what to do with or where to take it. So it's like it's like Destiny's like trying to give us a crafting system, but I'm not sure anybody's looking for a crafting system in a looter shooter. I mean, why not? Right? Bring, bringing up another looter shooter that everybody's raving about, Outriders. They have a crafting system, and it works really well. You know? But it, it, is it like actual, like, like, do you craft weapons and armor, or is it just cosmetics? Mm -mm. Yeah, like, like, crafting, like crafting things like, to make them better is one thing. Yeah, exactly. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah. To be like, honest, I can actually only think crap. of one set of armor I would actually transmog. Because the majority of the time, I, I, I'm, I'm a casual gamer at the minute. I cannot put the, the time I'd like to into Destiny, which is why I'm still not even at the powerful, ca powerful cap yet. I'm not far off, but I'm continuously changing my armor to the highest stuff I've got. Mm -hmm. I'm not infusing. I'm, I'm trying to get the pinnacles and that when I can. Mm -hmm. And so when transmog comes along, it's like, yeah, I'm still trying to get up there, so I'm not running a fixed set of armor or even a couple of sets of armor. So I'm not going to use that quite yet anyway. So what would you transmog then? You, 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 you put the bait out there, but then you didn't land the hook, man. It's the... Um, what was the summer event? I'm uh, trying to think what the summer event was. Uh, Solstice of Heroes. The year oh, one Solstice okay. of Heroes armor was amazing. I love that set. Mm -hmm. Now, didn't they say they're not going to do faction armor, right? Got some, well, not faction armor. Got, got some bad news for you initially. Because uh, that was one of mine was the anti-extinction armor. Um, but that's dead orbit faction. So if I had a reason to be angry, that would be it. <laughs> Let me have my, 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 my dead orbit, man. But yeah, they have the. They have the if you if you go into your events tab there, and events? have a look at, yes, you're in factions at the minute. Oh, oh yeah. I see. No, over, I'm I'm pointing at my screen, thinking you can see it. Go back into armor. I mean, yeah. armor. sir, that's not how events. Uh, there is plenty of solstice set. Was it that one, or was it the, no, it's the majestic solstice set, set at the bottom there? Resplendent was the first. Majestic came after the fact. Ah, right, okay. It's the resplendent then. Yeah. Yep. So when that's I, all together, that looks amazing. Us, us pointing to Respawn's live Twitch stream, so um, go watch the recording to figure out what, what we're pointing at, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Apologies. <laughs> Radio of the mind. <laughs> TV of the mind. It's all right. I can see him on screen, and I'm pointing at the screen like he can see me. It's like, no, he can't. <laughs> no, 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 the other way. No, no, the other other way. No, what, what are you doing? I'm pointing right. Uh... Or, or, or if we could actually get the very first armor set we actually had, mm. just Ooh. just because you could. The white one, you mean? Yeah. You, the very you first armor set we had. Person. Yeah. And just transmog that. The refugee just because. set? Is that what you're I don't, know if it, I, don't know, I don't know what it's called. Well, I have it up on the screen. There's two that we start off with. Refugee and Wastelander. Yeah, that refugee set actually reminds me of like, you know, um, 
the first first of the latest two Spider-Man films before he gets his spider suit from uh, <laughs> from Stark. It reminds me kind of a bit like that. It's got some boots on, some tatty old boots there, and a helmet with a ski mask. <laughs> it just, yeah. it just looked homemade, and it just like, yeah, that actually be quite cool. See, but also the raid armor. I, I don't wear the raid armor because it doesn't have the stats that I need. But visually speaking, the raid armor from the latest raid is gorgeous and it's it even got nice. a total of holographics on it too which i find really really good so yeah i guess there's my four well no because i can't do dead orbit but yeah that's that's my three sets at least yeah <laughs> yeah that's your wish list sets anyway mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so I, yeah and i i haven't even started looking I mean, other than the iron banner sets i haven't even looked to see what else is there, there are a couple other ones that i i think like the dragonfly regalia I like the look of just because it's crazy. I don't even remember where it came from. And besides that, I haven't even looked at this next to even see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I just like the crazy. It's like, I don't know. I feel like it's one of the Titan armors that doesn't look like a totally Titan armor. It just has all these crazy lines and things that stick out everywhere. It looks like a crazy dragonfly, which. You guys have yeah. armor that make you look like hunters. What was it? Last season? The seasonal armor from last season where all three classes look like they're just kind of. Chilling at their homie's apartment, right? Doesn't yep. look like armor, just looks like everyday clothes kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. I like I like that Titan armor. Like I was looking at that armor, I was like, that is really good armor. And at first I thought I actually thought it was Hunter armor. And then when I looked, I was like, wait, is that a butt kid? Is that a Titan? They were like, we'll give you one good looking set and four hundred and ninety-three terrible looking sets. You know, it's gotta balance it out somehow. Was it last season or the season before? The Hunter armor actually looked beefier than the um, yeah, than the, than the Titan armor. Yeah, the, the Hunters needed the thick thighs all around. The so Hunters all pinned shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, tonight, even please call this episode Cabal Pinups. Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whether we wanted it or not. We've stepped into a war with a cabal on Mars. Anyway, let's move on before Demon has far too much to cut out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's put our bird hats back on and go on with our clever centrifuges. And uh, so I guess we'll talk about some of these bounties that you get. So the armor synthesis bounties, there are five categories of them. Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, Destinations, Raids, or... or raids and dungeons, because R and D raids and dungeons is one category because Bungie makes the rules. So at least there's a number of ways you can earn these things. It was nice to see them include the raids and dungeons. It seems like every time they're like, here's a new thing. Don't bother doing raids and dungeons. You get nothing from it. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you want to do your Vanguard, you can complete play the strikes using a specific subclass or accumulate points in nightfall strikes, crucible, capture zones in crucible control matches, or complete match. Complete crucible matches and defeat opponents using a specific damage type as a team. Gambit, you can send send or defeat blockers in Gambit. You can defeat the primeval envoys, high value targets, and primevals in Gambit. So basically, play any of those three activities and do the do the activity you're doing. Destinations, you can defeat nightmares on any destination or in nightmare hunts. You can defeat bosses while defending the blind well within the dreaming city, giving you a reason to go to the blind well for the first time in like three years. Make sure the dreaming city is still even there. Uh, And then raids and dungeons complete the final encounter of any raid or dungeon and generate orbs of power in raids or dungeons. So I I like that it's either do, you know, complete the thing and beat it, or at least just generate orbs of power, because that's a thing anybody can do. Go to the Thrall way and make all the orbs, and then you win. If you pick the wrong bounty, some of the synth, synth strands will be refunded if you choose to abandon it, but not the full amount. So think carefully before abandoning and choose wisely. And as we've discussed, yeah, how many of these can you earn? Players can earn up to 10 synth weave per class per season, except in season of glass, because we're calling a season of glass budgie. Deal with it. Our next season to celebrate well, the introduction of Arthur, or God, Arthur synthesis, Arthur synthesis, the great man who brought us all the synth weave. Talking about the season of the redacted name, <clears throat> if you look in the notes, we see what the season is called now, right? And I'm not going to spoil what it's called, but 
uh, remember how I told you that's a great name and Bungie missed an opportunity? You're like, well, how do we know they missed the opportunity? You know, well, the name is out and they've missed the opportunity, right? So it is unfortunate. It is not called Seasonal Glass. Um, and uh, it's, sad. it's sad, really. Yeah. Where are you? The, looking? the, the name they have is it's not good. It's not better than Seasonal Glass. Not even by long. It's not even the same. I was gonna say same ballpark, but that implies that it's in the same city, and I don't even well, think it's on the same season ballpark. of the vault. No, it's not called season of the vault. Okay. Nope. I saw, I saw really season of. It's season called triple the, uh, one of the text strings on one of the sites, but anyway. To celebrate the introduction of armor synthesis in Season of Redacted, the respawn will tell us after I finish reading this what it's actually called. If you want that spoiler to enjoy, players may earn an additional 10 armor synth weave. I'm sorry, earn an additional 10 synth weave per class with the introductory experience. In total, Season of Redacted players may earn up to 20 synth weave per class, which can be earned either either to convert a four full armor sets or 20 specific items. So as a quick example, of the, for the hunters out there, that means you could unlock four armor pieces plus 16 individual cloaks Woo! to swap on your mood. Because really, let's be honest, you're going to have like one set and then all the cloaks to go with it. Finding the perfect cloak for the perfect day. See, I'm opposite. I have the one cloak I like because it doesn't have the hood. It shows my helmet. And then all of my armor sets revolve around that cloak. <laughs> one cloak and then your additional armor sets to you know mix and match your pants and shirts. Absolutely. All right. So the name of the season is a spoiler, and it's coming in in three, two, one. Season of the Splicer. Spoiler over. Totally not as good as Season of the Glass. Not even. Note, some exceptions apply. Yeah. Not just using the splicer, but for your universal ornaments. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. as always, universal ornaments may only apply to legendary armor pieces. Exotic armor pieces cannot take the experience, the appearance of alternate armor, as we want to maintain their appearance for players to quickly identify and understand what exotic perks a player may have in all activities. There is also a few exceptions at the launch of Year One Armor Synthesis due to technical constraints, but we are currently working on a solution for the future season. So. Starting, you know, next season, you will not be able to use your Year One armor for Vanguard, Crucible, Iron Banner, Faction Rallies, Prestige Raids, and Trials of the Nine. Now, this is just the Year One ornaments. You'll be able to use the other Trials armor, the other Iron Banner, current Vanguard and Crucible. But if, like Respawn, you want your Faction Rally armor, or you really want a Prestige Rage, rage armor piece from Year One, you can't do it yet. It's it's not available in the future sometime when they get around to it. We hope. I don't know. Did they say they'll do it in the future? Because all I saw was it's not available. We are currently working on a solution for a future season. There you go. They say they're working on it, but you know, no, no promises on when. Mm -hmm. Ornament can still be applied if the base armor piece is from an activity that the ar ar ornament originates. As an example, if a player owns the Crucible ornaments from the Cur Curse of Osiris, they may be applied to a Crucible armor piece at no cost. However, these ornaments cannot be applied to seasonal armor. Now, the question is this, right? Because those faction rallies had their own ornaments, right? If you turn an armor into an ornament, and that armor previously had its own ornament, could you then apply the ornament for that armor upon the armor that you've ornamented? Well, all base appearances from the 2018 and 2019 Solstice of Heroes armor will be available for the armor synthesis. However, due to an issue, the 2018-19 glows cannot be socketed alongside the armor appearance in the new Guardian appearance system. The glows will not be supported. Now, your Solstice 2020 armor glows were developed with the, you know, basically Armor 2.0 system, so those glows will work. Which is not an answer to your question, but an answer to a different question, because I don't know the answer to your question. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it seems, to, yeah, it seems to be, I'm sure it's a mix of, yeah, I, I don't know. There's too many Basically, if this, anything, then. Anything pre-2020, where you won't be able to do, from what I read in that, anything from pre-2020 for the earlier armor, you won't be able to apply the ornament for that armor set that you've transmogged. 
Oof. You understand what I mean? It's like the gloves. You can't yeah. do it for the first first ones, but you can do it for the later ones because they were Armour 2.0. Yeah, but the thing is, is all of the faction rallies, they're year one. So that makes me super sad. Well, you can't do it anyway because the faction rallies are excuse, is, uh, excused. Right, yeah. None of the faction rallies are even available to begin with. And as Respawn said, you know, you, you could also purchase your Synthwave or synth, synth Weave through Eververse. Players may either purchase a single synth weave or may purchase, purchase a five piece bundle. One piece is 300 silver, the five piece bundle is 1,000 silver. And for reference, the universal armor, armor ornament bundles cost 1,500 silver currently. Mm. And to avoid making purchases, synth weave templates from Eververse can be applied to any class. So you don't have to say, you don't have to buy like a hunter synth weave template. You can buy just one and apply it to whatever character you want, which, you know, small thing, but we'll take it. Small little victories. So do you, do you do you guys want to talk about shaders? Yes. All right. So about the shaders, everybody's up in arms that they're going to be more expensive. But it's do, like, do you want to talk about what it is first before we talk about the reaction to it? <laughs> if we must. What people are up I, in arms about? Because some so people may not. What's going to happen? Do you want me to read this bit to help out a bit? Because I feel like I'm kind of yeah. sat here doing not a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you, you read, respawn, react. So I've read too much. People don't want to hear my voice anymore. Well, that's why I was trying to read for you, Perry. Trying to share the letter. Through the Guardian appearances screen, we took an opportunity to improve the shader experience. Currently, shaders are a one-time use consumables that must be repurchased from collections for Glimmer or Legendary Shards. Starting next season, all unlocked shaders will be viable on the Guardian appearance screen while hovering over a shader, shader bucket. Players may apply shaders for 500 glimmer per, per armor piece. Additionally, we've added the option of a request apply all button for shaders, which will cost 2,500 glimmer total. This is the same glimmer cost to purchase the shaders right now, but we've done away with the legendary shards requirement. Shaders will continue to be earned through various activities in Destiny 2 or can be purchased using Bright Dust or Silver from Eververse. With the updated, updated shaders, we'll be increasing their cost from 40 Bright Dust to 300 Bright Dust. This will, be a, this will continue to be a one-time purchase and will appear in the Guardian's appearance menu when unlocked. In celebration of Armor Synthesis, a year one Eververse shader bundle will also be available in the Eververse for Glimmer. No silver required. And yes, and there you have it. We're excited for the addition of Armor Synthesis starting just a few, uh, a few short weeks. So basically, you've got a shader bundle you can buy from Eververse for Glimmer, which I, I kind of, I'm kind of a little bit annoyed actually because I quite like uh, all these shaders I've got, actually got from Year One, and anybody that started later than that hasn't necessarily got because that's that's the case of I was there then. Yeah, you you lose the had to be there status. Yeah. Yep. I mean. It's, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So I see what you're saying, but um, I mean, it it is just a shader, right? If I'm going to complain about someone, it's going to be more like a weapon, less less a shader, you know. But that being said, the reason people are up in arms is because what he said about the price hike, about the bungee uh, store. Uh, somebody said it was the the bungee economy is getting all uh, fluffled or whatever, right? But at the same time, you have to think about guys instead of you paying however much uh glimmer to buy one initially and then you have that one and then every time you want to use it you got to pull it out of your your inventory for additional glimmer and legendary shards and this and that and the other right you're just doing a one-time purchase and you have it forever so yeah it went from like 40 to 300 but you'll never have to pay to pull it out when you it's, run out of it actually you'll never run out of it. yeah so all, all you will pay then is to actually apply it to your armor through your glimmer. Yeah. Think about how much money you'll be saving by not having to use glimmer or any of the other crap to pull it out of your inventory. Right? I mean, look at the bright side, guys. Come on. Come on. Can't be angry about all of the things. And, so and it won't cost you your legendary shards anymore. So if you're a bit legendary shard poor, you're not going to be spending it on shaders if you want to look nice. Right? Yeah. Buy it once, it's a lot forever. It's more expensive oh, to buy it once because you're buying it for life. 
and for looks. For love. Wait. So yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I can apply one shader to all of my armor pieces now. This Dude, makes me very happy. The breakdown of it too, so you can just you know yeah, mix and match yeah. without having to swap back and forth to every piece, man. Yeah, yeah, I like how we have just yeah an appearance menu now that they show in the top. Just here's here's all your armor pieces. Here's all the shaders and the ornaments, and you can do it all in one screen without having to flip back and forth every time and waiting for the game to load every single uh, time. You do. The only downside is, what if you, the shader that you like is on the very last page? And you got to scroll through thirteen pages of shaders before you get to the one you want to apply. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna need a search function in it. <laughs> they definitely need a search function. That's my life every single time because Destiny continues to you know randomize the order of the shaders every time you pull the menu up. So it's gonna take my dawn and dusk and put it on the last page every single time because it hates me and doesn't want me to be happy. And Don't what's wrong it. with a good dead zone mark? That is the official Frozen Clan shader. So one of the prerequisites to being welcomed into the clan is that shader. There are other prerequisites, but I'm not going to tell you over here because you got to try to join the clan for us to tell you. <laughs> the hidden trial. Be to scared. Be very scared. <laughs> <laughs> be so I, I, uh, I feel like we have to have you know our, our our spicy ramen runner tell us about the spicy prime ramen rewards this week. Ooh. It seems perfect. This okay. week wasn't just the start of the Guardian games, but a fresh month of prime rewards. Taking centre stage, the Spicy Ramen emote is back. This colourful emote packs a wonderful punch with each bite. Hungry yet? Head over to the Prime Gaming Portal and make sure your Bungie.net account is linked. Once you've gone through all the steps, you'll follow, find the following rewards at Amanda Holiday in the Tower's Hangar. The Spicy Ramen exotic emote. Icora's Resolve Exotic Ship, Future Perfect Shell Exotic Ghost, and Jagged Dark Sun Legendary Sparrow. Questions, concerns, excitement. However you're feeling, you can find additional information on our Prime Gaming Support article. So if you've got Twitch, uh, Twitch Prime, you can link it to your Bungie account and get all those four rewards there. If you haven't, there is another you option. Should. Twitch Prime offers you a 30-day free trial. So get your 30-day free trial, link your accounts, and get all that for free. Which you should do, because they put a nice smattering of, you know, sparrows, ornaments, weapons periodically. And if you yeah. have them, you can set them to Amanda Holiday, have her hold on to them like in Layaway, and that way one day when you're ready to pick up that gun from three years ago, It'll be ready for you because the light level just keeps going up each and every season. Well, every now and again, they give us something new. Remember uh, that one time they gave us a completely new thing that had never come out in any previous season? It was only with the, uh, the yeah. Amazon rewards, right? It's not yeah. often. I think it's only happened once or twice since they've started doing it. But the chance exists. So, Yeah, and, and if nothing else, it's stuff to you, know, you can claim for free and then... Even if it's not them you want, break it down, infuse it, whatever. Yeah. It's free things for giving you. Free legendary shards. Oh, that spicy ramen is one of the few um exotic emotes I don't actually have from year one. Yeah. So does that mean you're going to link your Twitch Prime account to pick it up? It's free, of course I am. <laughs> Sir, if you how take can you be a Ramen runner and not have the spicy ramen. I think you might be an imposter. Mm, indeed. Are you? Are you a hunter? Are you not actually a warlock in disguise, like respawn? <laughs> that's, well, that's a hell of a disguise, man. Considering how <laughs> I'm always on the hunter. That's hey, that'd be a hell of a disguise. Cape cloak, not a big stretch, my friend. What you do is uh, pull. Your Pull your cloak around you, button it up at the front, and tuck your hood in there. Yeah, you're a warlock. <laughs> the whole jumping thing, right? I have the ability to go vertical. So, I mean, yeah, well, on your well, front, you're still going vertical, but in a horizontal way. If it wasn't for that, then maybe I would be a, a, a warlock main, you know, in, 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 in a different time, right? If you had the ability to go vertical. But, you know, as it stands, it's just not a thing. 
And whenever I jump, I like to go up. I mean, call me call me a pragmatist or whatever, but uh, yeah, that's just how it be sometimes. How it be. Oh, jump, jumping shouldn't go up. Jumping should go up just enough to think you can make the jump and then still fall to your death because you refuse to use your hands to pull yourself up. Yeah, right. That's the oh, thing. Look, you're complaining about that. In D1, we didn't even have a vaulting system, so... Still don't. <laughs> yes, we do. And, he uh, doesn't. From all accounts, uh, <laughs> de- demon, <laughs> demon needs Pan's vault cleaning service from that <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Vaulting system. yeah, you know, I, I'm sure I, I really wish Demon were here so I could get his hot take on having multiple new currencies that he now has to find a place for. So I, I assume because they're taking away all of your old planetary currencies after the season, then he'll have room for these new currencies. So yeah, some currencies out, some currencies in, but I'm sure he'll try to find a way to keep on, keep hold of his, you know, Titan thing, Titan flowers, so he can turn them in when the Titan planet comes back. I, I don't know. He's a crazy man who needs desperately needs more vault space, which I have not seen talked about here. Destiny. That's because it's not a thing, right? And I, I've said it many times, you guys. If Destiny really wants to make money, put something in the Eververse store where you can purchase more vault space. Night Demon will personally fund your company for the next five years, okay? He really will. Just don't tell his wife. <laughs> never. We would never do that. We would tell you about the, about the fair game. Because respawn over the, over the last few days, we've been tracking some interesting issues with the introduction of the Guardian games. Titans having invisible arms, contender cards taking up two slots in inventories, and a few other things. They've deployed some fixes, but they're still tracking some known issues. So the season of the chosen seal purchase. So acquisition of all the scannables in the presage mission is required for the season of the chosen seal. The scannables are collected over a period of three weeks. Players need to collect all the scannables each week to claim the associated triumph before the weekly reset. With the following weekly reset, the next set of scannables will become available in the presage mission. Because a period of three weeks is required to collect all the scannables, players have until the weekly reset on April 27th, which is three days from now as we record, possibly the day you're listening to this, to collect the first week's scannables to claim the triumph if they want to be able to complete it and claim the Season of the Chosen Seal from the Bungie store, or the Triumph, or, you know, get the thing done at all. Additionally, players will also be able to begin purchasing the Chosen Mods from the War Table before the weekly reset of April 27th if they want to purchase the Seal, because there are six mods in total which must be acquired. Which is all to say, if you want to do your Season of the Chosen uh, Triumph before the end of the season, start now, do not delay. The weekly known issues, the Titan Contender Eververse armor set makes the player's body invisible in first person, because invisible titans is a thing everybody needs. Certain shaders may erroneously remove the glow from the Eververse Warlock Guardian Games Universal armor set. The One Fell Strike Triumph may must be completed in the Vanguard or Vanguard Strike playlist to claim before the strike ends, or working to allow it to complete in the Guardian Games playlist. The contender cards are no longer taking up extra space in player inventories. Players may need to visit the tower and return to orbit for their inventory to update. The Zero Hours Scrap CF-71791 exotic ship no longer fires its middle four engines. Thus, players are not able to make it to their next location and are stuck drifting in space forever. The last person that happened, the last person that happened to was Crow, and he ended up working for Spider for six months. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be lost in space between worlds. Right. The Fifth of the Lost Hunter Cathodic Grips sure, shows the ornament glow when inspecting the hand, but it doesn't appear when running around. The Ophidian Aspect Ornament Coaxial Bond no longer displays SIVA particles on the Warlock's right arm. The Metropolitan Frigate Ship Wing animation displays poorly when warping to a destination. The Quick Charge mod doesn't actually increase the ready speeds of shotguns at all. The Mita Mini Tool doesn't show kill tracking column when masterworked, and the region chest in Trostland in the EDZ shows us unclaimed even when associated region chest triumph is complete. <laughs> For a full list of version issues in D2, players can check out the known issues article. Players who observe other issues should report them to the hashtag help forums in Bungie World. And that's our known issues, and that's our fixed issues. And I saw Bungie pushed a emergency maintenance 
patch yesterday, but I didn't see what it was actually fixing. So maybe it was probably all the uh, floral glitches, the farming glitches. Yeah, yeah. There are a bunch of there are a bunch of videos this week where Night Demon was like, "I could send you these, but I'm sure they'll be patched by the time the show comes out." And they like, yeah. I know a couple of them already have been. And if you want to know which glitches, uh, just go to Cheese Forever channel, and he'll tell you about all the glitches and. Likely that they were all patched by now. Was it the one like last year where they could just keep dropping the laurels in like the Titans did? No, it was the one I the one I saw was you can go and basically pick up the the cloak, cloak, uh, bond or mark over and over again, trash it, pick it up, trash it, pick it up, trash it, pick it up, trash it, and then it gives you some um, some currency laurels or something. It seemed like a lot of work, or you could just go play the game and get it done the same way. I don't yeah. know. A lot of these things, it's like, yeah, you could do that, or you could just go like run some strikes and you get what you get for about the same amount of work. I, I don't know. And we've got some movies of the week. the The Guardian Bowl one, I think, is particularly well done. Someone sort of set set forth teams of of hunters, guard hunters, titans, and warlocks to fight each other, sort of fo- American football style. I, I am sorry, and gentlemen. Common- Acceptable podcasting time has come to an end. All right, uh-huh. sir. Well. We do your section first. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. See, see, you made it. You made it almost the two hours. So good job, buddy. Yes. Ta-da. Yes. Because see, the, right. that's what would take us four weeks to get to. It does appear somebody's actually dropped into fill in for me, or Demon. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think he's British, so I don't think he can fill in for Demon. That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. I'm going to say anyway. All right. Thanks, guys. I Have like a good week. Scary. Kind of came in here without being invited. That's cool. It's whatever. You know, it's not like we have a show to run. It's not like we're professional streamers and YouTubers and podcasters or anything. I no. miss you too. How you doing, Respawn? <laughs> we're definitely none of those things. But but he's just in time to hear hear Respawn tell us about the news roundup of the week, all the things that are broken, all the tweets, all the things, all the things that Night Demon has has lovingly collected for him to read. Yes, he has. And there's quite a few of them this week, too. Respawn reports. We have DMG stating, Today, we're taking armor synthesis. Talking, not taking. I can read. A quick update on Nightfall weapons next season. No Vogue date just yet. Stay tuned. See you soon. Uh, Poor Gear Ello. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Porcarello says, uh, I thought Vogue comes out next season. Do you mean no date for the raid race? Vogue is, in fact, next season. People have been asking for a date so they can plan time off. We'll share the info soon. Just not in this wob. All right. So hold off on those vacation requests. That's right. DMG. Quick me. Sorry. Team made quick work for this one. Update. The issue is resolved, and contender cards are no longer taking up extra space in player quest inventories. Players may need to visit the tower and return to orbit for their inventory to update. Marvelous. Good patch. Good work. Uh, Phil Hornshaw. Love the picture, by the way, buddy. Hey! Is the idea here that you're supposed to completely fill the metal case, or... Is it just to give you some place to store them outside of your greater inventory and we should be emptying it constantly? DMG replies, yep, this was a solution to keep you from taking up inventory space. You'll see metal counts go up and down depending on what you have left to turn in. Definitely see the confusion from folks as it sits in the quest bucket. Passing this up to the team. So is that a drink or a puff or... He's passing up to the team. So, is it take a drink time? Oh, yeah, it is take a drink time. You had me confused, dude. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Puff. Uh, anyway, uh, hit the main Nightfall playlist and set the difficulty to Grandmaster for Inside Terminus. All the other available Nightfalls are under the Grandmaster node. So, if all GMs are available, shouldn't Insight Terminus be available as well? It doesn't show in a list for me at Bungie at DMG. This was from Chad. Yeah, so it looks like if you're trying to run all of the Grandmaster Nightfalls, whatever the current Nightfall is for the week, you'll need to go to the, you know, Nightfall of the Ordeal and set it to Grandmaster and not go to the space where the rest of the Grandmasters are because reasons. 
Uh, DMG saying he's replying to Paul Tassi. They're communicating to each other through a Twitter for some reason, even though they work. They don't work together. Whatever. This is just uh, this set. To be honest, spent a while yesterday going through the flow to build out the example set. Tried to go out of my comfort zone. Favorite part of the feature is that you can tell. Sorry, you can preview the pieces with shaders before you decide to unlock them. And yet he still chose willingly to make his hunter look like actual poop. DMG, I hate you. Thank you. That is something uh, worth calling out that you can preview these with the shaders before you unlock them. So again, if you want to make your armor pink and purple, you can say what exactly gets you know, colored here. What exactly is this going to look like? Because there's so many armor pieces you think are going to look one way, and you apply the shader, and you're like, you just didn't didn't bother to oh, paint that like armor. That is entirely black and gray, and then adds fluorescent blue out of nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> Painting is fun, right? Um. Okay. <laughs> so here we have a uh, blue J patent zero. No. <laughs> Patient. Please, my arm blows. I will pay so much money to get them back. Please, I need them. Any further insight on this at DMG04? This is a technical restraint of the gloves being treated as ornaments in game, so you can you can't technically apply two ornaments at once. Additionally, all base armor appearances and 2019 social security. Yeah. Yeah. DMG replies, yeah, socket on top of a socket, so to speak. Cool. So, so no socket on socket on socket on socket, just stacks on stacks on stacks on stacks. To be clear, Joseph Moses too kind of looks like a marine in that picture. If you are great, if you're army. <laughs> anyway, he says at Cosmo twenty three, Cosmo, there is a glitch on the new Guardian Games Titan ornament. I can't see my arm. <sighs> the most prestigious part of a Titan is invisible. That's a lot of money. All right, Cosmo replies, yeah, sorry about that. It is a known issue, and we are investigating. Okay. It's the best issue. It's the screenshots I've seen are marvelous. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then we have the whole season the 14 thing. Again, this is a spoiler. Start date May 11th, 2021. End date August 24th, 2021. Uh, da, 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 da. Breaking Destiny 2 season 14 is called Season of the Splicer. Destiny 2 Beyond Light. They found this by data mining uh, and they found uh, the arguments were calls to Season of the Splicer functions. Okay. So there you go. It is official unless Bungie changes it because somebody got a little too snoopy. And uh, there you have it, guys. Season of the Splicer. Totally missed an opportunity by calling it Season of Glass. Yep. That sounds good. Yeah. Maybe Season of Syntheseps because I should just wear those with my sweet Siva ornament and uh, Siva punch all the things. Siva punch all the things. Speaking of which, what's your what's your first transmog going to be? Is it going to be the the that that Siva looking army that we got from? Uh, God dang it. The the Wrath of Rasputin uh, season. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, let's be honest with ourselves. I think we all know the answer to that. It's, it's going to be something Iron Banner related. I'm not sure it's going to be the Armor Chef set. It might be the King of the Seashell set. It's hard to say because I don't remember which Armor set came out which year. It's going to be Iron Banner to be the first one. Beyond that, I I really need to look through them. You know, I thought you were stick with this guy. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I really have to look through them because I honestly just don't remember three quarters of the sets because I wear one armor set and largely ignore the rest of them. Well, keep in mind what Bungie said too is that um, if you're if you're wearing the Iron Banner because you like a particular ornament for that season, you can't wear that ornament. It's the base armor that you're going to be wearing. <clears throat> right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. That, and that, yeah, I mean, I say that, but also, yeah, that's still not. I understand it. But it's like there's too many moving pieces. Just let me see and get my hands on it, then I can understand it. Poor feeble Titan well, brain. The best, the best way to do it, it's because I was checking it out earlier, right? If you if you go to the piece of armor that you want to transmog, 
it'll tell you whether or not it's an ornament, right? In the name, it'll tell you if it's an ornament. And if it says ornament, you can't transmog your parody. Sorry. Well, that makes me sad. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, well, I think uh, we, our, our, our dear British uh, man watched some of the YouTube for us this week, but most of the YouTube was about, you know, bugs and things have been fixed. There is one video we'll put in the show notes, the updated Eververse calendar from Gaming Animal, who has the what's going to be in the Eververse store for the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't bought your volleyball shell now, or sorry, not volleyball shell, <laughs> tennis ball shell, ball. it's available for Bright Dust this week. Go buy it for Bright Dust this week because it may come back, but it will be silver next week when it comes or next time when it comes back. So if you want to know what comes out which week so you can figure out your silver or your Bright Dust purchases, uh, we'll throw that video's link in the show notes. And um, if you haven't seen it this week, uh, John Patrick Way 2 on Twitter's asked uh, asked La our buddy Lance Reddick, also known as the voice of Zavala, to you know give the Titans some some inspiration to try to make their way past the Hunters. And he obliged. And I've seen that posted to his Twitter account at Lance Reddick and a bunch of other people have picked it up too. So yeah, you know, he he, he is he is the just a wonderful part of the community. Our he is out of the community. I'm, I'm sad that he's a titan because we're not well, going to be able to get uh, our uh, hunter leader to do it because he's doing TV shows and whatnot, man. You, you know what Lance Reddick plays, though, don't you? He plays in a lot of different stuff. No, no, but no. I mean, I mean in Destiny 2. You know what class he plays, right? Pretty sure he plays a hunter or a warlock. It's a he hunter, plays, yeah. yeah, he plays a hunter. Yeah. He plays a hunter. The big show plays a hunter. Everyone plays a hunter. All large men in real life apparently play hunters. Because they're, like, you know, <laughs> they're, like, they're like, I know what life is like going through smash and things. I want to see what life is, is like going through oh, dodging and badness. Um, but that was just fun to see him read that and just he pops up everywhere. It's glorious. Like his his 30 seconds in Godzilla versus King Kong. Always a treat to see him. Oh, I just got my catalyst. Ha, ha, ha. Too bad we can get Mr. Philly into a, a blage. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's got TV shows and whatnot. There's no way we can get his time. That yeah. sucks, too. He's much even, even if Nathan Fillion can't, right? The last season, uh, Cade wasn't played by Nathan Fillion. A lot of people don't know that, right? Um, hmm. I forget the voice actor's name, but even if we can get him to do a Cade impression, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have the same impact as a Nathan Fillion one, but it would still be Cade's voice. You know what I'm saying? So it would be something. I just want Peter Dinklage to come back. For I real? Even, I don't even care as what, just as anything. Yeah, Peter and Dinklage. Yeah, 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 it was Nolan North who voiced Cade Six in the last season. Who isn't that the voice? Isn't he the voice actor of the ghost post? Uh, my brain just stopped working. Isn't he our ghost current voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nolan North is our current ghost after Peter Dinklage and also... Uh, the Cade after Nathan Fillion. So Nolan North is apparently all the things. He ain't me actually yeah. Lance Reddick in disguise. It's, it's hard to say. But yeah, I mean, even though that's accurate, he still did a better Cade than he does a ghost. Yeah. Dinklebot needs to be a permanent aspect of our lives, and he needs to just do Cade, period. You can come back as Cade 7. I don't even care. Yeah, no, this, this should absolutely be a thing. I don't know what we have to do to make this happen because he also has a career, but um, yeah. yeah. Careers, you think? So, respawn. Here's a fun question for you. How would you feel to uh, bump into a mysterious guardian one day and find out that their name was Ace? Uh, that would be cool. Although <laughs> I feel as though that name already kind of hangs out because, I mean, why wouldn't it at this point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just a fun question. I thought I'd ask. Now, what I'd really like to see is I want to see the one Guardian that managed to land the name Cade 6, right? And then the irony is that he plays like a warlock or a titan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, That'd no, be that'd funny. be I want to see a Cade 6 uh, floating around the towers at some point. And, but not on PC, right? Because I can change my name to whatever I want on PC, up to and including Cade 6. So it doesn't have the same meaning. I want to see like the Xbox player. Or the PlayStation player that landed that tag, right? Before it became unavailable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, hey, speaking of which, um, I've already given my opinions. It wasn't a rant because, you know, to me it made sense. But what do you think about the transmog system, the process to which you have to do the transmogging, 
and the limiting of the transmogs per season. I think I, it's a beginning. It's it's a start at the very least. Um, it doesn't look bad. I mean, I'm not really sure how to think about it just yet. Um, I'll probably have more opinions once we actually get our hands on it. But I mean, so far, I mean, the synth wave, sorry, synth weave uh, template stuff, it seems to make sense. Because um, everything that we do in Destiny, it costs some sort of a currency. Um, right. But Whether three it, this costs three currents. Yeah. And they they haven't taken out any sort of forms of currency as of yet, other than the planets that have been sunset. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. And those currencies get taken from you. If you haven't spent them, they go away. So they will be removed from your vault and everything after this season. Mm -hmm. Which, as a reminder, uh, recycle your shaders if you haven't done so. Get, get yeah. them out of your inventory because then you'll just lose them and you won't get the glimmer of the legendary shards. Gotcha. Yep. I'm currently doing that on my own. So you think you're okay with how they've decided to do the system? If you were going to make a change, what would you change? I'm not even sure yet. Um, I'm just, I, I have it up in front of me right now and I'm taking a look at it. Um, I actually haven't had the opportunity to read through the TWAB yet. <laughs> I got to read it tonight for our recording um but so far i'm liking what i'm seeing uh and it makes sense to me so far as a quick example uh for the hunters out there that could mean you unlock four armor pieces plus 16 individual cloaks to swap between depending on your mood um see that sounds nice cool. <laughs> so, so far i'm liking it all the cloaks but would the you be respawn and unlock armor no cloaks? Yeah, the, the problem is the time investment to transmog one piece. Because you need to you need to get all three of those currencies to transmog a single piece. And we don't know how complicated it's gonna be to attain those pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Or um or uh for that matter, you know, like because I was talking about it earlier. It's like what if it takes you so long to transmog a piece that you have to grind for like four or five days to get a piece, right? Got mm. to be to be longer. You know what I'm saying? So before you get your first full armor set that you want to build, it may be a month before you can actually wear it because of all the transmog shenanigans you got to go through to build just the one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think that that needs to be toned down. Again, I haven't seen it in action, so I'm giving Bungie the benefit of a doubt, even though I know I'm going to regret it. But um, I'm hoping it's not going to be that complicated to actually acquire these pieces. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, uh, and what's your opinion on the increase in price when it comes to the shaders? Increase in price to the shaders. Let me get to that section. Um, or could you just quickly walk me through it? Because sure. I yeah, wasn't one hundred percent sure on it. Inside of Eververse, uh, the shaders are going to go from forty glimmer to three hundred glimmer. Which is bright, shader. Dust. bright dust, not glimmer. Bright dust. Sorry, bright dust. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. For forty to three hundred bright dust. Uh, this will continue to be a one-time purchase and will appear in the Guardian appearance. Well, I mean, they've also increased our resources in terms of how we accumulate bright dust. Like this season, I probably had the most bright dust I've ever had in game, reaching upwards to about 10,000 bright dust. Oh. So, I mean, that makes sense. OK. So, yeah, I mean, as 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 the rager, right, I was expected to be mad about all kinds of things this week, but I'm just like it. There's nothing to be mad about, you know. In this particular instance, as 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 much as I like giving Bungie crap for stuff that they've screwed up, I think it's been thought out pretty well this season, except for the whole acquiring the transmog thing, right? That that's that's something we'll have to see in practice before I can give a strong opinion on that. But uh, barring that, um, the, the the shader cost, the I mean, I don't really have any complaints. It does make sense to me, and um, I'm glad that they actually thought it out this time instead of. They're just trying to get it out there, making a bunch of people go mad in the process. Well, they let us know they've been thinking about this way. So, I mean, and I would imagine they've even been thinking about it 
beyond that. It was just, you know, t- two seasons ago that they decided we should let them in, and it looks like they've been testing it out a little bit. Um, and I don't think that anything here is overly unreasonable as of yet until I at least feel it into practice, and then I'll make a more uh, solid, I, I guess, judgment call right. at that point. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I see that they didn't fix the flag issue, though, because I was over here in the tower. I I put in my uh, medals, and I was looking at the Titan flag, and you know, it just fills me with joy to see the Titans at the bottom, although I honestly thought the Warlocks would be third and the Titans would be second. Um, We've all bet on you. Yeah, right? <laughs> so you missed that whole thing, dude. There's a piece of lore. Uh, you got to go back and listen to the show. There's a piece of lore where the Titans place a bet on the Hunters to win Guardian Game. And the the bookies are like, so you, you what, you're going to rig the game so that they win? No, we're definitely going to win. But but you you've you've made a bet on the hunters winning. Yeah, they'll never see it coming. <laughs> huh? <laughs> There's way more to it than that. That's what I took from it. But the whole thing is absolutely hilarious, dude. And I think it's great. <laughs> no, I, I can pretty much assure you. There's nothing more to it. It's just that. <laughs> but yeah, we are not. So, a Anyway, the, the problem I'm talking about is is the Titan flag being beneath the platform. Like, if you go to the side, it's hanging out underneath the platform. I think that is... I didn't like it when it happened to the Hunters. I don't like it when, when it's happening to the Titan. I I think they should have fixed don't, that. Don't you know? lie. Don't lie. I don't. No, no. Because that's humiliation. I don't want the losing team to be humiliated. I just want the Titans to not win. Right? I want them to know that their place is always behind the hunter. Whether it's second or third, right? Just know that your place is is there, okay? But having anybody's flag go beneath the 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 podium, I think is a little much. You could have had a system rig so that as the flag goes down, maybe there's a little roller underneath that rolls the flag up all nice and neat and pretty, and then when the flag goes up it unrolls it and unfurls it and things like that. You could have done something like that. You don't have to just let it sit beneath the podium that's disrespectful no matter what class it is yeah yeah come on yeah be a little classy with this come on the flag's not touching the ground that's the important part (laughs) no ground that is true that is true (laughs) um but yeah anything you wanted to talk about sweaty sweets because you 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 popped in so what's on your mind bro and tell the people who you are and you know, plug your own show, because uh, why not? Why are you here? And yeah, come- well, I mean, believe it or not, I've actually been trying to get in here to chit-chat with you guys for the past three-ish weeks. Um, and, you know, there was, whenever Truth was here, I was able to make it for a couple minutes, and then I've acquired an angry wife, and I had to leave. And uh, it was also a holiday that day, and we had some plans with oh. family. Uh, but so, I was... Did you acquire the angry wife, like, midway through, or was this a new act? It's not like he just like acquired like the same day. Is this like a mail order ride situation? What's, what's going on? It was more or less because I was um what's the word? Uh, I was kind of like delaying my responsibilities that I had to do because I wanted to pop in and have a chit chat for a little bit. So yeah, um, I did that the week after. Um, I actually, me and Truth had finished recording uh, an episode. I think it was with Kingsley Mac that week. Um, and I had stayed up. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are listening and not sure of what I'm talking about, uh, my name is Sweaty Spooks, uh, co host of show Guardians Ghost Cast. Um, and a few weeks ago, my co host, uh, Truth Lives, was on the show, and I've been trying to make it ever since. Uh, but, anyways, on the night that we recorded for Kingsley Mac, um, I stayed up all night long. Because I was going to actually try and make it here for the morning. Because uh, I knew that if I went to bed, I wasn't getting back up. But I also have responsibilities that day as well. Um, I had about an hour between the time that you guys have recorded the previous week. till I had to leave to go get my uh, tires changed from winters to summers. Uh, and get my oil changed. And uh, I just didn't happen to see you guys in that hour. Um, so the time came that I had to leave. My dad was at the car shop and it was his day off. I didn't want to keep him waiting. So I just hit the road and, uh, took, went to go see him right away. Uh, it wasn't until I got back that I noticed a message from Night Demon. Just kind of wondering what happened. 
Uh, so I felt really bad about that. I let him know, um, and then immediately passed out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and this week uh, was my first week not working nights. Uh, back to day shift, and I was up at a reasonable time this morning. Um, and I was like, wait, today's Saturday. Two Titans and a Hunter record today. Let me see all if right. they're all together. Oh, there they are. I noticed that Night Demon wasn't here. Uh, but that's okay. Maybe I'll catch him next time. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to come in and hang out. He's got friends and family responsibilities and <laughs> lol responsibilities. Oh. I remember when I used to have those. Don't I know what that's like? <laughs> okay, past three weeks. <laughs> um, he's just out rigging the games. Don't worry about it. The hunters are in the lead for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For now. <laughs> I was discussing with him earlier, right? So you know the 10% on the 10% on the 10%, yada, 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 right? Um, as long as they don't know if they're 100 numbers, right? I don't think that that's even enough to let anybody pass us, right? Because let's say, as an example, there's three times as many hunters than Titans, right? Um, if the Titans got all the losses for the whole time, let's say that gets them upwards of about 80%, right? Well, let's even round up. Let's say it gives them a 100% bonus. That means they can only ever double their medal, right? That's the maximum they can go is each medal equal to two, right? Yeah. So um, double still does not beat triple. So unless hunters get complacent and just start not doing anything, I don't even think the catch-up mechanic is going to work, which don't get me wrong. This isn't a brag, although it kind of sounds like it. Uh, it's more along the lines of, you know, this the Guardian games, the idea of the Guardian games itself is a fun idea. But in practice, as long as Hunter numbers don't get nerfed, Hunter should always win, right? Yeah. Whether you add catch-up mechanics or any of that other stuff, it's, it's not going to outdo the sheer number that Hunters have, right? So if the Guardian games is going to be a thing, it's it's got to be... I don't know. I have no idea how to make it different, but... As long as it's a numbers game, hunters are going to win. I mean, it's just it, they have to. The only time anybody else is ever going to win is if, you know, our numbers get nerfed in one way, shape, or form, right? Or a Titan medal is worth far more than what it's actually worth, or a Warlock medal is worth far more than what it's actually worth. I mean, it, it has the same effect as nerfing the numbers, but uh, as long as numbers are a thing, then hunters should always win. So that's why he's all like, oh, they're in the lead for now. I'm just like, yeah, I see what you're saying, but unless we just stop playing, you can't catch up, even with the catch-up mechanic. So, I don't know. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Who do I'd you say want? You... Well, um, <clears throat> Respawn might be a little bit proud of me for saying the following sentence, but uh, previous season, I was a Titan main, and going into this season, I am now maining a Hunter. <laughs> see um, the, the pride it, did swell but uh, on the other hand i'm thinking well duh <laughs> <laughs> continue man go ahead Here, here's the follow-up so whenever i first started playing destiny i didn't have the privilege of play, and i'm going to lead to who i want to win but this is more of a small explanation as to why um never had the privilege of playing d1 i started when forsaken dropped and i started as a warlock mainly due to influence from my clan um when I first started playing, the very first thing I noticed was uh, all the <laughs> talk about Titans. <laughs> um, so anyways, I don't know. I just uh, went Warlock for the first year. I actually really did not enjoy it. It kind of made me not want to play the game at all. Um, so going into Shadowkeep, I decided to switch it up. And um, I had remembered in my first year of playing getting destroyed quite a bit by Titans. So I figured, oh, well, maybe I should be a Titan. So I tried it out. And you know what? I actually had a lot more fun on Titan than I did on Warlock for my first year. Admittedly, I'm starting to gain game knowledge, map knowledge, weapon knowledge, and I'm starting to become more familiar with things, uh, how the seasons work and all that, whatnot, which I think contributed to why I wasn't having as much fun in Forsaken. Uh, but anyways, moving on. Um, whenever I was on Titan, I was basically just shotgun assault rifle because that was the meta. Um, 
and that's that was nice for a time. <laughs> well, I mean, 600 RPM rifles, right? I mean, we got right. Nine Hunger at the time. We had Hard Light at the time. All those types of weapons. Uh, my weapon of choice was Suro's Regime. Um, so, yeah, that that's what I enjoyed doing for a little while. And then coming into Beyond Light, uh, I seen the trailer for a Revenant Hunter. And I was like, whoa. Done. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> it reminded me of Sub-Zero uh, from Mortal Kombat. And I was like, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, starting off, we had floaty wizard stuff to face in Crucible. That was fun. And then I could throw my uh, tornado, walk away, and didn't have to worry about them anymore. <laughs> and there's been some ups and downs throughout the season, some buffs and uh, nerfs, etc. Um, at the end of the day, I found myself, weapon-wise, leaning a lot and heavily into hand cannons now. Um, I don't know if you know this, Respawn. I know that you were trying to add me a little while ago onto Xbox uh, into a party to do some activities. Um, I've actually moved away from Xbox, uh, and I now main PC. Um, thank you. Thank you. We got thank another you. one, boys. <laughs> I'll have to add you on Steam later because I haven't seen you yet. Um, but anyways, so with that, um, you know, I've been doing a lot more hand cannon farming because that's something I've never done before. And with luck, I managed to get my uh, Adept Igneous Hammer last weekend uh, mm -hmm. with Hammer Forge Rifling, Flared and Magwell, uh, Quick Draw, and Rampage. Um, and the way I got that, I needed to have it. <laughs> I entered uh, raffles for carries on Twitch, like 25 different streams at a time. I just needed to win one and get carried. Wow. <laughs> and it worked. That is, I admire that level of dedication. That, <laughs> didn't even know you could do that. Now I know what my next goal is. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's, the, that's the one time I've ever been flawless because I was watching a, a small ish, well, you know, smaller streamer in D1. And I was up at like four or 5 a.m. And like, I think I subscribed to his channel, put my name in the hat for the raffle, won that raffle. One time I've ever been to the lighthouse in D1. Yeah. yeah. Being carried. Cause yeah, there's, there's, there's no way for a mere mortal to do so. Yeah. Mortal. And I mean, you know, getting carried and being a part of the team is in my opinion, you know, for the debate that's out there, I don't really have an opinion on it, but if, you know, carry versus recov. I don't see a problem with being carried at all. I mean, sure, your teammates might be doing a lot more work than you and a lot faster, but you're still there. At um, that point, it just becomes your goal not to die first. <laughs> well, see what they'll what they'll tell you to do. Respawn is they'll tell you to max out your intellect and stay alive. And mm -hmm. actually, I saved one of the rounds because um, the enemy team. I think it was like the round in order to take it home it wasn't right. the flawless i think it was maybe sixth so the one before flawless but anyways still a pretty important match um pretty important round uh the other team was catching up to us and um the enemy team caught on to what i guess the other two guys were doing um i'm trying to remember i think it was cauldron maybe i forget what the map was but for example in cauldron um when you first spawn you can walk straight and walk through the doors to get into the center of the tower right yep. that's one of the spawn points now as soon as you walk through that door you're going to get rushed by the enemy team coming from the uh, uh the left side underneath the bridge on the uh, opposing side of the bridge i guess where the other door is right. so they had come through there and i had a funny feeling so i actually went around the right side instead of going into the in, into the center um and i just see bleep both both people down and uh, i get in there and um i think they were all low health due to the teammates that i were with and right. i just managed to clean it up and i was like damn my heart right now <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah like you can hear it thumping in your ears man during those moments yeah that's that's crazy good for you yeah. man thank you, you. So save the round or was that the game uh that was for that match, which was uh, the one before Flawless. And then, of course, the Flawless came and they did their thing. Um, and fun fact, it's actually a range masterwork as well. So it was the exact role 
that 98% of the community and myself was wanting. And um, the adept mod that I got was the targeting adept mod. Um, okay. Now, I did get an adept messenger before. Did not come with Desperado. The rolls were kind of meh. And the adept mod that I got for that was Blast Radius, which is useless. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know, I didn't really count that one. This one was, like, exactly so, what I needed. Target acquisition, what's the downside to it? What are you suffering? Like handling or what? I don't think I'm really suffering much because whenever you masterwork it, everything gets a three-step buff. Um, right, but, but the adept mod, it's plus to something and minus to something else, right? Let me let me bring it up here in dim because it will tell me. Negative 18 stability. Gotcha. Ooh. Yeah, but when you're two tapping, do you really need the stability? <laughs> uh, hasn't bothered me any. <laughs> right. Um, headshot. Oh god, it went up into the left. Headshot. Oh god, it went up into the left again. What are we gonna do? Ah. Yeah, and the recoil direction is 95, so that's like oh really my god, good. Yeah. You really don't care about your stability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Shot yeah. doesn't matter. I'm sure myself <laughs> and everybody else hates you for getting that on your first try. Uh, I'll have to ask myself and everybody else. Yeah, well, I yes. mean, you know, yeah. everybody else... Getting that on your first roll, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I mean, everybody else is getting, like, stupid, amazing, steady hands, which I do have a couple that are nice. Um, and palindromes, adept palindromes. I'm not high enough light level to do the adept version of palindrome yet. So I, for quite a few hours, I was just trying to get just one palindrome. Uh, mm. And I got lucky enough to get two. Uh, one with, um, let's see... This is a reload speed masterwork with hammer forge rifling, ricochet rounds, overflow, and range finder. Overflow? Uh, was... Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, done. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing more you need. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got a palindrome with, I was looking at it. I have one with Thresh, Bottomless Grief, Extended Bag, and Small Bore on it. Okay, okay. What's Bottomless Grief do? I don't, uh, I forgot that one. I, I forget one, too, honestly. That's one they're gonna they're gonna fix next season. At the moment, while while I'm the last living fire team member, each take oh, out that, magazine. Yeah. That's one that, that they're giving it like a plus twenty something. I can't remember. Yeah, they're changing it next season. So I'm just hanging on to it, figuring it'll be better when they move that next, or you know, when they make it a inherent perk next season or whatever they were doing. I can't remember yeah. often. That was kind of my idea behind uh, palindrome. Is you know, once one twenty gets their inevitable nerf, which we all know will eventually come. Oh, um, but you already said it's coming. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah it's coming. Yeah. So. Well, that was just on to to the range, wasn't it? And that that was it, like by four to six meters. Yeah, so far that's all they've let on about. But yeah, yeah, but you know, once I take that away, I migrate to whatever's. Yeah, yeah, you go from two tapping at forty five meters to two tapping at forty meters. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much of a of, of a nerf. I mean, a little bit, yeah. No. You know, what's going to happen is going to have to bring up something else that's going to have a higher uh, TTK than that gun in order for it to be nerfed, right? Yeah, and I suspect 140s will be the one that intrinsically gets a buff. I don't think it'll be a direct action. I think it'll just kind of be with nerfs and buffs that they're doing to other things that the 140s will come up. And I'm hoping and I'm praying, and I'm sorry if you guys like this gun. I have a little personal vendetta against it, but DMT, Dead Man's Tale. <laughs> oh, I hope they nerf that thing soon. Because being able to, like, literally, no scope, point, click, kill from across the map <laughs> is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a little nuts. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Um, I, I'm actually looking forward to um, a buff where, let's say, sniper, uh, not sniper, uh, scout rifles get a buff to target acquisition and range, right? Yeah. So we can outrange these hand cannons, which... The fact that a, ha a hand cannon has more range than the scout rifle is a rage I'm not going to get into at the moment, but just know it's there. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Why is why is this a thing? Scout yeah. rifles have a place that we're they're just desperately looking for what that place is besides killing champions. But for right now, their place is in the inventory, and you know uh, their mods for the season for shield popping and whatnot. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a it's it's a little ridiculous that 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 a hand cannon can pop somebody at a scout rifle range with two shots no less. I'm just like, no, whatever. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm very <laughs> curious to see because because when the seasons change, they always do a bunch of bunch of you know put all the put all the guns into a into a cup and roll the dice and say okay we're going to change this we're going to change that you know they they hit the things that you know when you look at trials report and they're like here are the four guns everybody used it's like you can count on it those are the four guns or archetypes or whatever that are going to get hit first those are the obvious ones so what else are they going to bring up what else is Bungie? you know what's at the bottom of that barrel and, and across activities where they say well nobody's using these let's bring these up whatever these happen to be so that's right give me a submachine gun that can pop somebody at a scout rifle range how about that uh yeah <laughs> there with the stability on people that. out there laughing like oh that's stupid that's a that's a submachine gun <laughs> well it's stupid that a hand cannon can do it too so shut up uh, i've been hit at range from some of those those multi-mock machine or submachine guns from uh iron banner after that stability got increased oh, yeah. things are vicious on xbox yeah. really Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. SMGs on Xbox are, are ridiculous now. Yeah, they got a little worse on PC as far as stability wise. Uh so yeah, I think that's a little weird that PC they got I mean they didn't get worse worse, right? But our stability yeah, was yeah, will be okay. And then yours got increased. So <laughs> Still, to answer uh, your uh, original question, respawn, who do I want to see win? I'm gonna say hunters this year. Nice. Um I think they deserve it this year. I'm I'm sorry, Warlocks and Titans. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, especially after we got literally cheated out of it last season, at the very least, at the very least. yeah, definitely got shafted last year. <laughs> the only thing I want to see is do the hunters play all three weeks? Because <laughs> right? your people have a tendency to start out strong and then give up. Now that be that being said, I haven't done much this week. I, I played the first day or two and then haven't touched my Xbox since. Right. But, uh, but I'm very motivated by go pick up a thing, go do a bounty, go turn a bounty in. So see, yeah, since yeah. you told me that uh, uh, Zavala's voice actually encouraged his Titans on his Twitter, like that gives me a little bit of a cause for concern because now they're going to try to like rally up around him and whatnot. And, I don't need you guys rallying. All right. I want my hunters to stay strong. You guys did great. I didn't contribute much, I'll admit. But even even when I wasn't playing, I was on Discord. I was on the forums. I was on the chats encouraging my hunters. You know, when I can't be there for you physically, I'm there for you in spirit. So huzzah, hoorah, bazinga, and let's take this trophy home, okay? And hopefully it's not by Zavala because it doesn't belong there. Put it where Cade used to be. Even though it's hidden and nobody will ever see it, it still needs to go where Cade was. That's my opinion. Also, the trophy should be of Cade and the Colonel. Oh my God! If they did that, I would win. The trophy. I would actually never stop playing Destiny Two, if, like for real. I would uninstall everything else in my Steam library and only play yeah. Destiny if they did something like that. And everyone's like, oh, you're being over, you're being ridiculous. It's just Cade 6 and you know what? Shut up. You have your motivation. I have mine. All right. Anyway, on that note, Sweaty Spooks, give your plug again. Yeah. Um, so you can catch me on the Guardians Ghost podcast. Uh, you can also catch me at twitch.tv slash sweaty spooks. Uh, that ends with a Z as in zebra. I know the Canadian thing. <laughs> um and you can contact me on discord um through one of the many discords that i am a part of or you can Including dm me directly everybody yeah. that listens to our show he's on this discord you can direct message him his name is as it shows up here on the discord uh yeah shoot me a link to your twitch i know you just said it but i will forget it yep. so already... let me go ahead and uh and 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 follow you on your twitch and uh yeah uh, where can we find your podcast at? Where do you post it? You can find it anywhere you can find podcasts. Um, we use a piece of software called Anchor, and it distributes to literally all the places. You can find it on Apple Podcasts. You can find it on Spotify, uh, Anchor website itself, Podbean, all the places. Excellent. And uh, that's another question I had for you. Um, do you have any YouTube channels you want to put out there, or is it just your podcast and your Twitch? Um, you know what? Yeah, I haven't done anything on YouTube in a little while, but I'm hoping to get that back up and running. I'm not even sure what the name of my channel is, if it has TTV at the end of it. Yeah, so Sweaty Spooks TTV. Uh, so that is there. 
There you go. Everybody here, follow him. Give him some love. Real good guy. Uh, really <laughs> hunter, but you know he's improving. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he came to Destiny in the perfect spot. He played Titan during the season of the Titan meta and then yeah. played Hunter during the season of the Hunter meta. So I think he's got uh, this all. Every and, um, season is Hunter meta. It's just that Titan's got a little buffed in your quote no, Titan season. Well, no, no. I mean, you gave a 600 RPM auto rifle. That's the Titan meta. That's the season of Titan. You yeah. can call it whatever you want. We're still looking for the seasonal warlock. Sorry, guys. It, it, it may happen sometime in 2027. It's hard to say. The season of warlocks is where they have no steps or jumps in any of the maps. <laughs> <laughs> see. Hey, guys, there's this brand new raid. It's just a flat track and field. <laughs> you just got to progress through it to kill stuff. Oh, I got the wife giving me a look. Guys, I have to bounce. Give us the exit. And uh, that's going to be about it. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Your Titans are parody and night demon. Your hunter is no one response in real life. Your lore scribe is not our your your secret guest of the of the week, sweaty spooks. We'll have another secret guest for you next week, assuming the lockdown has ended and the lockdown is uh, not as lockdown as it was. You can email the show at two titans and a hunter at hotmail dot com. You can find the show on Twitter at two titans underscore hunter. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and really just type two titans and a hunter into your internet. It'll take you there. Find all your favorite guardians on Xbox Live and respawn sweaty spooks and apparently all the master race people on uh, over there on PC. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and everywhere fine podcasts are sold. Watch the show on YouTube. Listen to us everywhere you can listen to us. You can join the Discord at discord.frozen.party. That's frozen with a zero. But uh, you know, we make no guarantees. Come join us, don't come join us, don't let me tell, tell you what to do. I'm not your real dad. But respawn, it would seem that due to the sheer disparity in class populations, Guardian Games is very hard to balance. So I, as Mazurik on Twitter, or I'm sorry, on Reddit, have a solution for this. Never do this again and bring back Faction Wars. I love it! Faction no, Rallies are the best. Bring factions, because factions don't care what class you are. Factions just care what faction you are. And Dead Orbit, don't care who you are. Always the best. Get rid of Guardian Games. Bring back Faction Rallies. And say I agree. Jeff. Deuces! Destined the wind, are we all?